Okay, so where we left off, we were intentionally setting up digital duotone coloring in Photoshop for our spot illustration. I'll just review that quickly. The important thing about digital coloring is that you open up a blank new file in Photoshop that is a high enough resolution for your printing needs. So what, what I recommend we do for your spot illustration is at least eight by 10 inches by at least 350 pixels per inch. So you just say file new and you create that new open space in Photoshop. Then you drag and drop your vector EPS into it. So my vector EPS is right here in my assignment five folder. And I had a few different EPSs I could play with. I had one that I, I made from a, an inked sketch that I scanned and then cleaned up in Photoshop and then live traced in Illustrator. And that one has more variety of line. So the line weight is a little bit more dynamic there and I think helps my personal kind of style a little bit show through. But the other one, I'm going to turn that off for a minute. The other EPS was from using the blob brush within Illustrator alone. And that gave me a much more technical looking outline. And I have that saved as an Illustrator file here in order to save it as an EPS, because you can't bring Illustrator files into Photoshop, I would need to open it with Illustrator and save it as an EPS. See how it won't let, at least old versions, won't let AI files into Photoshop. Which doesn't really make sense since they're both Adobe images. All right. So in order to convert, make sure you have an EPS file for your vector. You'll have to go into Illustrator to do that. Even vector.com, it allows you to save as an SVG, but it doesn't allow you to save as an EPS. But what you can do is you can open up the vector.com SVG file in Illustrator and save it as an EPS. So all of these are digital format uh, compatibility issues. Well, that well, Illustrator is opening up. I can also look at inspiration for coloring. So here in Google Chrome, I've opened up just a Google image search and I'm looking for different mascot images since that's what I'm coloring. And those different mascot images might help me with my coloring of this blue and green bird, right? So what do I do with these? I have kind of green ones. I have blue ones. I'm just going to do quick screen grabs, targeted screen grabs, which on a Mac is command shift four of these, which will go right to my desktop. Doesn't matter how large or small they are. I'm going to use these to steal colors from instead of always having to just choose the colors directly from the color selector. I have like the blue dinosaur and the green dinosaur. All right, now that I have those, I can go to the assignment and I'll show you my progress so far, which I've been posting. Due by midnight tonight, we want to have a sketch by each of you. We want to have clean vector line work by each of you. And we want to have a color version of that line work submitted for each of you. 
So in showing my examples, I have my sketch here. I have my vector line art here. This was the line art I did with the blob brush, and I just preferred this one. So that's the vector I'm using. Then let me add on. And then you have resources, some slides about different coloring options. So this is my image traced. And I'm going to upload that. And this is what I was doing in the last videos. So just basic flat color filling in every contained shape in my spot illustration. And I, I just selected different blues and greens from the color selector. But now as I start to refine that, I'm starting to move on to what's called duotone color. But even if I just submitted these, I have the sketch, I have the line art, and I have a color solution. That would meet all the requirements. But we want to learn how to not just meet them, but make them engaging as art. And we can color in as many different ways as we want. So I'm going to take all those screen grabs, and I'm going to make an inspiration folder of them. So color inspiration. Take all those screen grabs, drop them in. OK. So once you have your vector as a smart object layer, I have mine floating on top here. You lock it with your padlock. You make a blank white layer, or you rename your, your background layer as a blank white layer, and you lock that. And so what I was saying was that the bottom blank white layer is like white bread on the bottom, like white wonder bread. And your black vector line art as a smart object that's locked and protected is like German black bread on the top. So those are the two pieces of bread for your sandwich. And what goes in between are all your different layers of coloring. So my flat color layer looks like this. And I'm able to do that by using my magic wand, having contiguous checked, and having a tolerance of 32, which is the default in Photoshop, selecting the area from my, my black bread layer, my, my vector line art layer. Even though it's locked, I can still select from it. So I'm selecting the empty space. And then on a new layer that I call my flat local color layer, I can use the paint bucket to drop in that color. So let's say I wanted to give him an orange wing. I can do that. I selected the color, and now I just drop it into that selection. And it looks like that. So that is a way of doing flat color just using the color selector within Photoshop. But there is another way, which in many ways I prefer, which is to use some of your inspired colors and to steal from them within Photoshop. So here are my color inspiration files. What I'm gonna do is open all of them, even my screenshot of my own flat color, I'm going to open all of these in Photoshop. These are just small, low-resolution Photoshop files. But if you open them in Photoshop alongside what you're working on, then you can steal colors directly from them using the, the eyedropper tool. So I'm going to say open with. To do. 
Photoshop. No, you get to color these however you want. That's kind of the beauty of a coloring book. They can be abstract expressionist colors. They can be Fauvist colors. They can be Art Nouveau colors inspired by nature. They can be film noir, only warm and cool grays as your colors. But they need to be behind your line work. That's what makes it digital coloring instead of digital painting. All right, so now you can see I have all of them open as different tabs. What I want to do is make sure that my original work is at the beginning of those tabs. You can see a list of all of them. And then I'm going to go to Window and Arrange. And I am going to say 3 Upstacked. <laughs> which is an arrangement of different windows open in Photoshop. So what that does is it allows me to have these different images that I'm stealing from, and I can move them into these different windows. And I can float them in their own window as well. But it means I can steal these colors directly and use them as direct color reference. And there's no copyright on colors unless it's a trademark seal, right? And none of these are, are trademarked colors. So what, what do I do? I use, actually, I just stay on the paint bucket. And this is what's great. If I have contained shapes and I have filled them all in, like I have tried to do with my flat colors, this is what my flat color looks like. Let's say that these colors were really crazy and inappropriate. They weren't the local color at all. Instead, they were flatting colors. So I'm going to, to show that, I'm going to go to hue saturation, and I'm going to shift the hue to something crazy. So these are a good example of flatting colors. They're really saturated, really bright really kind of nutty. And why that's helpful, I'm going to even rename that. I'm going to rename that layer as flats. This is kind of an optional way because this is professional practice. Someone goes in behind the line work and puts crazy colors. And usually what they'll do is they'll pick a color that's different for every shape so that the, the colorist can then easily decipher what one is from another. So every local color would get its own weird shape. You know, let's say something like that. Okay, so now, how do I use this image reference. I'm just going to nest them all in these sidebars. We'll be doing this again with digital painting because it's really helpful to steal colors and palettes from other files instead of having to choose all of your colors from this millions of color options, right? So at any time I can kind of scroll through these and see different options. See, that one's a good one to start with. Let's say maybe this one I like, all the different blues. So now on my original file, I am going to simply use the paint bucket and hold down Option. And I think, oh, okay, this is a kind of a bright blue wing. So I'm going to choose this color for that. You see how when I hit the hit option, my pink bucket becomes an eyedropper. And then I can just let go of option and drop it in. And it will copy that color onto my file. 
And then this wing is the same color, but it's in a darker shadow. 